America is on fire, as you know, as a result of that um, killing of the 46-year-old George Floyd. Um, that died as the life seeped out of him over over nearly nine minutes with a police officer's knee on his neck. And the President of the United States of America hid last night in a, in a bunker in the White House and turned off all the lights. He hasn't really said anything yet um, in public. All he's done is tweet. And I'm looking at his Twitter page, and the last four tweets essentially are almost like an epitaph for the America that we grew up with, for all its many faults and flaws, and goodness knows no country's perfect. Um, the America we grew up with has gone. Hopefully not forever, but for now. This one here is, is perhaps the most uh, disgusting. He writes, The lamestream media is doing everything within their power to foment hatred and anarchy. I don't know if you've seen footage of a BBC cameraman being charged utterly unprovoked by a police officer. I don't know if you've seen footage of American journalists um, filming police officers taking pot shots at them. Uh, not, I don't think, with fatal rounds, but one female journalist has, has lost an eye as a result of this. I don't know if you saw the CNN journalist, a black man inevitably, being arrested for no apparent reason and then shortly afterwards being released. But the police are reading these tweets from the president and they're adjusting their behaviour accordingly. And now he's essentially painting a target on the backs of the free press, the free media. The lamestream media is doing everything within their power to foment hatred and anarchy. I'll translate that for you. Journalists are reporting reality. The next sentence, as long as everybody understands what they are doing, that they are fake news and truly bad people with a sick agenda, we can easily work through them to greatness. Which translates as, as long as everybody pretends that they are truly bad people with a sick agenda, then it increases the chances of me getting away with being a truly bad person with an ostensibly, well, profoundly sick agenda. It, it, it's not even a pretense anymore. Uh, that, that mask that many, many people very, very naively thought was his real face has gone. He, he's got nothing left, and he can't even blame it on foreigners. So we move to the next tweet. If you can't blame it on foreigners, who the hell are you going to blame it on? Your own catastrophic handling of the coronavirus crisis and your own reintroduction of white supremacism to the mainstream in America. How are you going to blame that on foreigners? You can't blame it on foreigners. So here is an utterly meaningless tweet. The United States of, of, of America will be designating Antifa as a terrorist organisation. That's a, an abbreviation for the words anti-fascist. There is no organisation. Uh, no one could tell you where it's based or who heads it. The world is full of people who are anti-fascists. We won the Second World War, thankfully. Anti-fascists. Actually, speaking of the Second World War... Is there anyone else in history that you can think of hiding in a bunker while demonising anti-fascists? Just trying to think. In a bunker, right, hiding like a coward and getting furious about anti-fascists. No, I've got nothing. I just, it's weird that. It's on the tip of my tongue. It's like, there must be some... So he's in a bunker, right? He's, he's in charge of a powerful country... He's ridden, essentially, to power upon a tidal wave of bigotry, prejudice and racism. He's hiding in a bunker from his own people and he's raging about anti-fascists. Yeah, oh, I really feel there is someone. 